Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how to measure the velocity factor of a piece of transmission line like a piece of coaxial cable using the time domain reflectometry method. Well, don't let that scare you. It's not a highly technical, very difficult thing to do. All you need is a signal or function generator capable of providing a square wave or a very short pulse and an oscilloscope that has a horizontal time base capable of measuring 10 nanoseconds per division. So it's not that tough. We can do this together. For the what and why of why would I even want to measure the uh, velocity factor of a piece of transmission line I refer you to my introductory video on this subject. Okay, so how do I use this time domain reflectometry method to measure the velocity factor of a piece of coax? Well, first of all, what is time domain reflectometry? Well, I'm going to go to the whiteboard and draw some pictures for you. So, what is time domain reflectometry? It sounds so complicated. Well, it begins over here. We have a signal generator and we have a scope. Now, the purpose of the signal generator is to produce a very, very narrow pulse. Just a, a, a very quick pulse that's just a few nanoseconds long. And this, what happens now is that this pulse, this is called the in, better make it so you can see it, incident. The incident pulse. So it is being injected in this end of the, this piece of transmission line. And for the sake of argument, I'm calling it 50 ohms, but it doesn't have to be 50 ohms. Uh, when we do it in a little while here, we're actually measuring the velocity factor. I'm going to be using a 93 ohm piece of transmission line. But for the sake of our discussion here, 50 ohms. Now this pulse then is injected in this end of the transmission line and it travels down through the transmission line until it hits this unterminated end of the transmission line. Now, unterminated, we're going from a 50 ohm impedance of the transmission line to the unterminated end, which is now infinity ohms, because there's nothing out there, there's no termination. And so what ends up happening then is this pulse then gets reflected back in its entirety back to the beginning point. And so on the scope, what you're going to see is you're going to see the incident pulse. And then at some point in time later, you're going to see the reflected pulse that has come back from the end of the cable. And so this time that is occurring between this pulse and this pulse, this time period, is this round trip time from end to end and back again. And so knowing how much time has occurred between these two pulses, knowing that this is a round trip, we then can calculate the speed at which this pulse travel down the coax, hits the end of the transmission line, and then re has reflected back. And knowing that time, we can calculate the speed, we can calculate the velocity factor of the, the transmission line. So the only thing left after that is to do the math. So, let's talk about do the math. First, we remember that 
The speed in free space, that's an important thing because velocity factor has all to do with the speed in free space is equal to 11.8029 inches per nanosecond. You could probably shorten that to 11.8 inches per nanosecond. The round trip time, if you had uh, a piece of, of transmission line that had a velocity factor of one, the round trip time in free space would be equal to two times the length of the piece of trans transmission line divided by the speed in free space, and that gives you nanoseconds. The velocity factor then becomes the round trip time in free space, that's this number that you just got, divided by the measured time between pulses because the signal is going more slowly down that piece of transmission line than it would in free space, this number is going to be bigger than this number. And so the resulting velocity factor is going to be some number less than one, probably on the order of 0.6 to 0.8, somewhere in there. So now let's do the experiment and and uh, measure the velocity factor of our 93 ohm coax. So now we're going to do the measurement on a piece of 93 ohm transmission line that I have here. One of the things that you need is a signal generator or function generator. Now I happen to have a function generator which has an impulse output which gives me a very 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 narrow pulse at a given frequency rate, but most people don't have that kind of thing. So what do you do if all you have is a square wave generator? Well, there's a way of creating an impulse to do that. Now I'm going to show you my jig here. So here's a simple jig. We have a, right now I have a that's a 30 picofarad capacitor that I just that I got out of a piece of old equipment. Here is a very ancient uh, 47 ohm non-inductive resistor. That's an important part of it. So the signal generator comes in here through the capacitor to the 47 ohm terminating resistor. And so by using that, I can get a very nice impulse to use for my measurement. All right, so we are ready to take our measurement. We see here the incident pulse. There's nothing connected up to our test port yet. Here is our test jig that we made here with the capacitor and the resistor, like I said. And the signal generator is just set up for an 80 kilohertz, nine and a half volts peak to peak uh, square wave. And so that's what our incident pulse looks like. There's no reflection out here at all. Now let's connect up our transmission line. So now we got our coaxial cable connected up through our test jig. We have our signal generator connected here. Our signal generator is set to 80 kilohertz, just a standard square wave. And we are down here. We can see our incident pulse and our reflected pulse. So we adjust our incident pulse so that it's perfectly lined up on that, fir on that first radical here. And now what we're going to do is count the number of radicals to get over to the peak of the other one. So we got one, two, three, four. That's almost exactly 4.2 divisions. And if we look over here, we are at 10 nanoseconds per division. So now that we have that, we can do the math. 
Now that we have done the measurement, now it's time to do the math. To begin with, we have to make a little correction to the length of our coax. Yes, the transmission line is 167 inches long. However, if you remember, here is our test fixture and the, the pulse that we're talking about starts here, goes through this entire test fixture and finally gets to the coax. So the reality is the pulse is traveling out this way through the coax back to here and then back through here. So we have to add this part of the test fixture to the length of the coax. Having done that measurement, that's about five inches. So the length of the coax that we are interested in actually is 172 inches long. So that's what we're going to be using for the length of our coax. So we go up here, length of coax is 172 inches divided by our 11.8029. So 2 times 172 divided by 11.809 comes out to be 29.145 nanoseconds. So if this pulse was traveling in free space, unencumbered, to go out to the end of the coax and back again would be only 29.145 nanoseconds. But the reality is it's traveling more slowly than that. So the round trip time in free space then is 29 point one four five nanoseconds. Now when we did our measurement we saw that we had four point two divisions and that was ten nanoseconds per division. So we actually measured forty two nanoseconds round trip time So clearly it's, it's going a lot more slowly. So let's see what that comes out. We put in here for measured time between pulses as 42 nanoseconds. We do this division and we get a velocity factor of 0.693 nine. So that pulse is only traveling at around seven tenths the speed of light down and back again. Well in our next video we are going to be covering how to make this measurement using a vector network analyzer. And to do that, we will be using a mini VNA Tiny, which is a small vector network analyzer about this big, relatively inexpensive. And so until then, thanks for watching. Toodaloots.